in this episode. <laughs> Always one bowl. Just tidying up the threads. Sprite can is shims. It's the best kind of shim material. By the way, Sprite, if you want to sponsor the videos. Go with the same packing as the other side, and then I'll run the dial indicator down it and I'll um, see how we're looking. Looks pretty good so far. Luckily, I think I caught the ball bearings out of it, so hopefully um, it should be all right. Beautiful. There's that coupling we made last week. like these caps that I've welded on the end here are becoming a bit of a problem they're pushing the they're pushing this off so where this is coming into it it's it's hitting the sides there. I think the solution will be just cut the um cut those bits off. Right, now that's all back together, we'll um, turn the computer on and I'll see if I can move it back and forth and see how good it is. So um, I've forgotten that the amount that I've taken off of here, I haven't taken off of here. So it's actually bending the ball screw, so that's probably why it's not very easy to move. I have to put a 5mm tacker under it. So the quick easy fix is I'm just going to um, basically drill two holes in a bit of metal, weld them to this plate, and then that'll sit that nice and straight, and then I won't have that curve in my ball screw anymore. Now I've um, cut this wee piece, drilled a couple of holes in it, and I'll basically push that forward. I'll chuck a couple of tacks on there and then we'll see how well it moves back and forward, see if we've fixed the problem. Probably not the greatest idea to be welding on something that you've just um, machined, but I guess the machining wasn't that good in the first place. <laughs> Hopefully I can't do any more damage than I already have. Right, we'll see if that works now. Give it the old um. See if I can stall it. Just, uh, <laughs> I think I might have fixed it. I can't can't stop that. Oh. Nah. I think these Chinese ball screws. I got a bit of a. You can probably see a bit of a whip in it. Not ideal, but eventually I'll replace all these linear rails and um, the ball screws and things with probably you know some better quality ones. Sweet, will that work? I guess the next thing to do will be mount the ball screw on the bottom of this, mount this back onto these linear rails and then put the big plate back on top and see how she runs. There's a certain way it goes because I've drilled holes in the bottom of this and then the cap screws sort of locate it so just got to figure out which way it goes. It goes that way. mount the headstock back on so we've got the, the spindle that I built um, which you can see in another video up here. This is how I set belt tension on this machine. Seems tight. 
Right, well, I guess I'll um, we'll turn the computer on and bring the head down a bit, and then hopefully I'll be able to just line it up, put some bolts in it. Good to go. It might help if I uh, plug the Z axis in. Now we can um, use the keyboard. what I came up with for the mounting of the vise. Basically that goes through through the hole on the front there. And then that piece there that I turned sits in there, the same as that one. And then it clamps it all together. I haven't had the vise on there since I actually machined this. So I'm gonna have to, because I can't reach it with the machine, I'll just grind this area so that I can actually get that to sit flat along the bed here. So I'll just mark sort of across there, there. And then I know that that's where I've got to grind, the, grind it down to. I swear I spent half my time out here looking for things that I had on my head or I've just put down in a safe place. <laughs> Come on, D-Wild, make a battery that charges itself. I'll put these behind here, and I'll still manage to lose them. So this piece here is um, a bit high, because when I actually made the piece, I made it flush with that. Stupid decision, should have been thinking more. Um, but yeah, I'll just chuck this up in my lathe, and we'll go and machine that face off. Um, bring it down say 5 mil, and then we'll have a lot of clamping clamping area on it. So we don't really want to chuck it up like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these um, around the other way and then I'll be able to sit them in there like that, which will keep it straight, keep it, you know, or reasonably straight and then I can machine the face off. There's a lot of crap in there, so I'll give that a blowout with the air gun and give inside the actual chuck here a bit of a blowout and yeah, see if I can get it to move a bit smoother. <laughs> Uh, fail. Uh, so on these ones, you've actually got a inside and an outside. So I should probably put the correct ones in. Same thing. Number one, number two, and number three. It's also a fail. I should be able to stick it in this one and then have it poking out the front there. Right, so we're good there. So I'll. Um, I'll get this onto the gimbal and then I'll get a bit of a closer shot. Taking the top off, um, it's a bit shorter through here now, so um, yeah, should be good. Yeah, so it's below now, so that's what we're after. Need drill the end out. Thought I'd get the smallest drill bit that I could possibly find. I'll just give it a bit of a, a chamfer like that. Hopefully, that'll allow the bolt to start a bit easier. I know what everyone's going to say, you haven't trammed in the vise, but I'm just going to chuck some stock in there and give it a cut and see what happens. I'm not too worried about um, tramming the vise in or anything yet, I just want to see what it does because this year won't be completely set right, so I'm going to have to play around with that a bit anyway, so just for this test it'll be fine. Alright, so now I um, need to set up the servo drive, so this is the servo drive I'm using. So this is just one off of um, AliExpress. Nothing too fancy, but does the job. So that's the power and the spindle encoder. Fifteen hundred RPM.
Seems to be chilling for us. That's uh, 293 millimeters a minute. I don't think that was too bad for a first test. I mean, it all seems pretty good. So that's the finish there that I'm getting. Not too bad. It took quite the big cut off of it. I mean, that's that feels really smooth. Even putting your nail on it, it feels reasonably smooth. So pretty happy with that. Oh, so that's about all I've got for you this week. Pretty good. Got the machine back together. Got some test cuts done. So pretty happy with that. Yeah, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. Yeah, want to leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the machine or if you've got any ideas for videos. Yeah, just let me know down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel because uh, there's a lot more machining and lathe work and I've even got some hydraulic stuff in the pipeline so if you're interested in any of that subscribe thanks for watching